Hi, my name is Chris Smith, and this is a short video on how to build an admin panel for your DynamoDB instance. And so we'll cover how to add in uh, CRUD functionality for creating, reading, updating, and deleting different resources. And we're going to do all of this in Retool. So if we can jump straight into Retool here from the home screen, we can click Create New Blank App. Give our app a name, we'll call it my DynamoDB admin panel. And from there, this takes us to the retool canvas where we can go and add in different components for our UI. So things like charts, tables, text inputs, checkboxes, custom components, etc. And also we can configure our database resource for DynamoDB in the bottom panel here. And all of these are individual panel views. And on the left-hand panel, we can see all the metadata about the user, about different components we add. And so to start out, let's just uh, focus on the UI for a moment. So what we want to do is uh, view a user's table. So we'll drag and drop the table in. And we want to give our app a name. Let's just call it, we can use Markdown here. We'll call it my um, Dynamo DB admin panel. format that a bit. And what we're going to want to do is have this users table and be able to edit users and add new users. And so to do that, we're going to need a container here. And let's give it a name. Actually, let's change this to a tabbed container. So we'll call this um, edit user and new user. And we'll, now we'll add the functionality for editing a user in this tab and for adding a new user in this tab. Okay, so um, this is a good starting point. So let's get the data in from our DynamoDB resource into this app that we have built so far. So to do this, I'll open up the bottom panel and choose New Resource Query. And when I do that, I can choose from uh, the resources that I have available but instead of choosing one that's already available, if you don't have one set up, you can go to create a new resource. And from there, find DynamoDB. Click on it. And then you can add in your AWS credentials and click test connection. If you have any trouble with this, you can go to the DynamoDB docs, which I'll link in the description. And you can find the various IAM parameters you need to set up. So let's just go back to the app. And so from here, I already have uh, a database set up. So I'm just going to search for DynamoDB. And here's my test resource. And to start out, what I want to do is just select my table that I'm working with and choose a scan option just to pull in a bunch of data. So let's preview this. And I can see that when I preview this, it gives me a bunch of objects with usernames, emails, and ages. So now I can link this data into my table by selecting the table on the canvas, going to the data input field, and within curly braces referencing my query1.data. We need to save and run it. So I'll just reference the dot items so I can see that there's an items key that comes back and it comes back with an array of 12 items each as an object with ID, email, name, and age. So now linking that in, I can see that my table is populated with these different users. So let's just configure this to be a little bit easier to read. So I'll set compact mode to on and uh, the first and maybe easiest thing we want to set up is adding in some delete functionality. So let's add an action to the right hand side of my table and we'll call this uh, delete. So this is what we will click in order to delete items from our database. Um, so we don't have a query for this set up so what we need to do is set up a query down here and the way I'm going to do this is just duplicate my current query, which will keep the references to my resource setup. 
And let's go ahead and name this delete. And let's change the name of this one to uh, read. And we can delete this one. And from here we want to choose the delete item method and set up our inputs like so. So what we're going to do is reference the ID of the row that's selected and from that ID we'll pass that back to our DynamoDB instance and it'll return a, a success message whenever we delete that item. And you can see as I hover over this it's telling me that the selected row um, populates to a value. Um, we can also reference this, since it's coming from a button, we can reference this from data on i, and this will pass the index of the row directly through the button. Either way should work. Okay, so let's just test this with this item here. And what we want to do is, after we delete an item, so I'm going to save this first, we want it to go back and read the data from that table so that our table updates on the front end. So let's save this and test it out. So we can click delete here. Oh, we haven't linked our query in, so let's go select the action in the table and choose delete. And now our button should be linked to our delete query. So let's delete this. And we can see that it ran successfully updated the table and deleted that item. Okay, so um, a little helpful tip to add in here, especially if you're working with sensitive data, is to create a uh, confirmation modal saying, hey, are you sure? So let's do that and we can see if that comes up. So now when I hit delete, I can give the user a choice to cancel out. Okay, so that gives us our read and delete functionality. So next what we want to do is set up our update functionality and our create functionality. So uh, to do this, uh, let's start with updating a user. Um, we will set our action or method to update item. And then we need to pass in some very specific um, parameters for DynamoDB so that it knows which item to update and which properties within that item to update. So uh, we'll come back around to this in a second, but let's set up our UI for editing a user. So to do this, I'm going to drop in a couple of text inputs and have them show the current values for the selected row. So the first one I will do is the name and I'll set the default value to the table1.selectedRow.data Dot name. And now I can see as I choose these different rows the field updates. So now let's just copy this and paste in a couple more and now we will set this to also do the email and the age. And for email we want to reference email and for age we want to reference the age. Okay, so now we have our values set up and let's just drop in a button which will give the user the ability to um, actually update those values. So let's say um, update user. Okay, so now we've created this button and we want to link this button so that when it's clicked it goes to our update query. So we'll add an event handler and trigger the update query and maybe set that to only run once every two seconds to prevent any duplicate queries. Okay, so let's try this out uh, in a second. So we'll give it a changed value for this field, but we need to map in these values into our update query. So let's see what the proper syntax is for this. Um, and if you're familiar with DynamoDB, this will probably be more familiar with to you. Um, but we're still going to be referencing the row, but in this case it's going to be the selected row. 
data.id, so we can see that's referencing correctly now. And for our update expression, uh, we need to pass in three values. So we're going to use this DynamoDB syntax. And we need to use um, an expression attribute name because the name value is going to have a conflict with the DynamoDB protected fields. So we'll do that and we'll set up this expression. And if you're not updating a field called name or any of the other conflicting values, you don't need to do this. And next we're going to pass in the new values that we're going to be updating. So let's just reference these here. And this will be text input 1, 2, and 3. So let's just update those values. And as I did that, you can see that now we have the proper update fields referenced in our attribute values. Okay, so let's save this and um, also trigger the success query. Okay, so when it's done updating, it'll update the table. So let's take a look at this and we change the value to 28. Let's just change it to 29. Uh, we copied over our confirmation modal, modal, so let's turn that off, save this. Now we will click update user. We can see that a query is running. And we can give that a second. And we can see that the value in the table updated. Okay, so let's just change the, change the name also and the email and make sure all those values are coming through. Okay, so our update is working, and now what we wanna do is give ourselves the ability to create a new user. So let's just copy these, and we'll paste them in here. And now we have text input five, four, and six, and I think we're gonna need an ID field as well. I'll just give this a name, call it ID. And a button. Say so create new user. And all of this is very simplified, but if you're familiar with DynamoDB, uh, this should give you the right sort of starting language and familiarity with how to use Retool to build a super fast admin panel. Okay, so let's um, set up our query so we have a create query here and this time we need to do a uh, put item and the syntax for this is going to be just an object referencing the fields from our text inputs so we'll have a name key and we'll reference text input 4 and our email reference text input 5 and our age will reference text input 6 and the ID will be text input 7 and you can see that the age is actually a number so we don't have any uh, quotes here so this will pass in as an integer okay and we will update, so let's save this, um, put a value in our ID field, and link our button to our queries. We'll add an event handler for creating, set up some debouncing again, and save. So let's, let's say my user test. Okay, so we create the user, and we still have that copied over confirmation, and let's organize this, and we can see that my user was created. So there we have it, in about 15 minutes, uh, we were able to create an admin panel for DynamoDB for creating, reading, updating, and deleting a user. I hope that was helpful for you. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments, or you can join us at community.retool.com. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you around the internet.